Good morning, and welcome to another Rider's Morning Commute with Ashton Gaskill. Today I wanted to talk about climaxes and uh, cliffhangers from chapter perspectives. So not book climaxes, but scene climaxes and end of chapter cliffhangers. Especially in use of how they use it in the web serial Worm. I've talked about Worm before. It is a serialized story, uh, one of the most successful, most popular serialized stories on the web. Uh, it's about teenage superheroes. Um, and I'm going to try to avoid spoilers here. I know it's not something that a lot of people have read. It's very long, but it's very good and worth it if you get the chance. So I'm going to try not to spoil things. But as I've been reading it over these last few weeks, I've gotten to about the two-thirds mark. I got to uh, arc 20 of 30. And a few arcs in a row kind of had the same structure that I had theorized before, but kind of chickened out on using. So moving forward, I'm going to try to use it more, and I thought I would share that with you. So as you might recall, my basic scene structuring is kind of a watered down version of my overall book uh, plotting method. I break down, kind of start with the goal of my scene, and I end up breaking it down into eight parts. So I have kind of the introduction, telling us who's there, where they are, what their goal is. Then I move on to the second part, which is them going to wherever changes they need to make to start pursuing their goal. Then they encounter conflict, then something changes as far as the emotional part of the scene, but they restructure the conflict in some way where they realize what's actually going on. Then there's more conflict, then there's the climax where we have yes, but, or no, and, and then there's the resolution. I theorized before that it would be powerful for the sake of a cliffhanger to help pull your audience through the book to basically cut your chapter off at the last climax. So you say yes, but, or no, and, but you don't give them resolution. You don't tell them what happens next. And in my writing, I found that that was leaving me with a sense of incompleteness and was bugging me as a writer. So I kind of tried to do that, but for the most part, I just kind of wrote it and gave a little bit of resolution. I didn't give everything, but I gave more than perhaps I should have. Worm, on the other hand, and I don't remember exactly which uh, arcs these were. Um, they were the arcs... Once again, try not to spoil things. So I'm going to avoid even mentioning which arcs they were. But there were a number of arcs in a row where there would be kind of those same beats. They introduced what the goal of the arc was, there was conflict, things got shifted, there was more conflict in the new shifted paradigm, and then there would be a climax. And you'd be looking forward to those climaxes. Like, you did a very, or they, I'm not sure if it was a guy or a girl, they did a very solid job building up to those climaxes and making you care. It felt very emotionally satisfying, which not every arc manages, um, which is understandable with how much pressure you're under when you're writing a web serial. But these few arcs in a row, like, just hit it out of the park one after the other, in my opinion. But each of them ended 
with this big climactic moment and you didn't know what the fallout was going to be from that and that's what you wanted to know. You wanted to know it badly. And sometimes you didn't even know for sure whether or not they succeeded. Like they would start to take the action and you would see the yes or the no but not the and or the buts but you knew it was coming. Like it was set up such that there was going to be repercussions either way. So yeah, maybe that's part of the key. Maybe part of the key is setting it up so that no matter what happens, your audience has an idea of what success and failure means. That way, whether or not they succeed, your audience has an idea of what might come next, and they have <clears throat> the capability to guess, and they'll want to know whether or not they're right. And they'll want to know what the ramifications of those consequences will be. So like they see A plus B, and they're going to guess equals C, but they want to know if it's actually C or not, and if it is C, what comes next. So hopefully that gives you something to think about. Thank you for writing with me today, and I hope you have a great one.